the marriage of the Lamb. As the bride of Christ, the church, we are more and more to live godly lives so as to be ready to be united to our heavenly bridegroom. Here's a fascinating passage that follows chapters 17 and 18 dealing with Babylon and what happens to Babylon, this rebuilt city, if indeed this is a rebuilt city. Realize that not all Bible students agree that this is indeed a rebuilt city. Some believe that it is just a powerful force or a powerful, uh, some type of political, religious system that takes over the world. Uh, but if you compare Jeremiah and compare John, I think it's a very strong possibility that it is a rebuilt city. But notice what happens after Babylon is destroyed. After this, I heard something like the loud voice of a vast multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah! Salvation, glory, and power belong to our God. Because His judgments are true and righteous. Because He has judged the notorious prostitute who corrupted the earth with her sexual immorality. In other words, this is a visible scene to all of these people in heaven. And they're rejoicing over the destruction of all of this evil. And, and they say with this song, And He has avenged the blood of His servants that was on her hands. Then you read on. Then the twenty-four elders. And by the way, let me just simply say that that first statement seems to be believers of, of all time, as it were, who are looking down on this horrible scene. Believers that have been removed from this earth and taken to heaven, which would include David and Abraham and Moses and Rahab the harlot and all of these people that have been removed. Rahab the believer, who's no longer the harlot, according to Joshua's time. So you have all of these people, everybody who has been removed from the earth and they've gone to heaven. And then the 24 elders, we read, and some believe this is symbolic of the church. There's no way to prove that. It's a possibility. But then the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who is seated on the throne saying, Amen, hallelujah, a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you His servants. You who fear Him, both small and great. And here is an exciting scene. Then I heard something like the voice of a vast multitude, like the sound of cascading waters. You ever been to Niagara Falls? This is Niagara Falls a thousand times over. I heard something like the voice of a vast multitude, like the sound of cascading waters, and like the rumbling of loud thunder saying, Alleluia, because our God, our, because our Lord God, the Almighty, has begun to reign. Now, keep in mind that at this point in time, you have some, what appears to be some interesting chronology. Babylon has emerged. Babylon has been destroyed. There's this scene in heaven of rejoicing over the destruction of this evil city. And so it, they, they're saying, Jesus has begun to reign. And let us be glad, rejoice, and give Him glory, because the marriage of the Lamb has come. This is a fascinating metaphor. And His wife has prepared herself. Now let me just insert here. There seems to be this vast multitude that is crying out, glory to God. But on center stage, this metaphor is the wife of Christ, the bride of Christ. It's not, if you look carefully at the text, it's not the church that is symbolized by the bride of Christ that is saying this. It's Abraham and Jacob and the sons of Jacob and all the believers of all time are looking in on this wedding scene symbolically and in the center of that scene is the church of Jesus Christ. And they're shouting glory 
to God. They've been invited to this wedding ceremony. And notice that she, the bride, was permitted to wear fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen represents what? The righteous acts of the saints, the righteous acts of believers, the people who are part of the church of Jesus Christ and who become like Christ as they have served Him here on this earth, but who are now in heaven in this marvelous scene. And then He said to me, Write, Blessed are those invited to the marriage feast of the Lamb. And those who were invited would be the believers of all ages. He also said to me, these words of God are true. Now what we have here is a very interesting situation. What John saw prophetically was a grand culmination of the great mystery that was revealed first and foremost to the apostles and New Testament prophets. Now see, this takes us back into the New Testament. For example, if you go to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, you have heard, Paul wrote, haven't you, about the administration of God's grace that He gave to me for you. This is Paul talking now about his, his calling. The mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have briefly written above. By reading this, you are able to understand my insight about the mystery of the Messiah. What is this mystery? Well, he says, this was not made known to people in other generations, that is, to Abraham and Jacob and even Isaiah and Jeremiah. Uh, this was not made known to people in other generations, that is now revealed to his holy apostles, to Peter and James and John and, and me. As apostles and prophets, Paul said, by the Holy Spirit, it wasn't revealed like it is revealed now. What is this revelation? The Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and partners of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. And later on in that passage, he talks about the church. The mystery that was revealed is the mystery of the church that was born at Pentecost and that someday will be removed from the earth. And what John saw there was the church, the bride of Christ. There we are, center stage, with all the saints and believers of all time shouting glory to God. Now, if you go on in Ephesians, we read, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave Himself for her to make her, that is the church, holy, cleansing her in the washing of water by the Word. He did this to present the church to Himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle, fine linen, righteousness, holiness, in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing but holy and blameless. See, this is what God's will is for those of us who are a part of the church of Jesus Christ is to more and more become prepared for this day through our righteous living, holy living. This is talking, I think, about sanctification, not justification. This is talking about uh, becoming like Christ after we are justified by faith. And I believe that this is the scene that uh, John saw, looking to the future there in heaven. And so that leads to a very interesting question, that is, how does this scene in heaven demonstrate that spiritual growth and becoming mature in Christ is not only personal, but it's corporate. Not just for me or for you as an individual, but for us as the Church of Jesus Christ. Well, look at Paul's prayer. I love this prayer. And this comes, of course, as he's dealing with this great mystery. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. I pray that He may grant you according to the riches of His glory, and the you there is plural, to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in the inner man, and that the Messiah may dwell in your hearts, all of you, 
through faith. That doesn't mean that Jesus will come into your hearts through faith. It means that He will live His life through us as we live by faith, as believers. I pray that you, being rooted and firmly established in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and width and height and depth, to know the Messiah's love that surpasseth knowledge, so that you, all of you, that's plural, may be filled with all the fullness of God. And there the fullness of God is His righteousness, His holiness. And so we are to become more and more like Jesus Christ until someday we are moved from this earth and God presents us to His Son. We are His bride, dressed in fine linen, which is the righteous acts of the saints. So here we have this great challenge to become like Christ, not just as individuals, but as a family, as the body of Jesus Christ.